Okay, so we will uh, continue from where we had uh, stopped last time. We will just recap a little bit so that uh, we were talking about contaminant transport in sediments. So, so this water is here. So we have a zone, so we, we last time we looked at a very simple case of where the uh, contaminant is uh, uniform, we have a solution for that. See in the sediment side, if z equal to 0, it starts from here. Uh, we, we, do, we did the uh, semi-infinite system where we say at uh, time t equal to 0 at all uh, z, rho a2 equals rho a2 0, where rho a2 is the uh, the concentration of A in pore water. So in this system, we, we, our system is the sediment, this is pore water here, there is rho A2 here also in the uh, sediment in the water, that is also rho A2, but that is not what we are modeling right now. Our model here is the uh, pore water. And this is WA3 in the sediment. So initially, what this means is this is an initial condition. What this means is that uh, initial contamination in the sediment. That's, that's what it means. And it also means it's that is uniform since we are saying that uh, rho A2 equals rho 2 rho A2 0 at all z, which means it is uniform concentration. Which is usually not true, but uh, for this purposes of uh, getting an analytical solution, this is uh, uh, this is okay. Then we also have at z equals to infinity and all time rho a two equals rho a two zero. What this means is that very far away from the surface, this is where the activity is happening. See the surface is uh, where all the activity the mass transfer main bulk of the mass transfer is happening. So very far away from here say somewhere here nothing is happening. So we looked at when we draw the solution to this thing we take the uh, if you are drawing the uh, concentration rho a2 as a function of height and this is the equals 0 initial this is rho a2 0 and this is time t equals 0. Initially the entire thing is at rho a2 0. But as time progresses you, you will see depletion at the surface and as this depletion will then slowly come down. So you notice that at some z far away from the surface it is still at initial condition. So, so as long as you are there is some time in the future where this boundary, this condition does not hold true. But if your analysis is within that time, then it is okay. You can use the semi-infinite boundary condition as long as this part, whichever z you are analyzing and the time that you are analyzing, as the time progresses, the time is increasing as we are going in this direction. Then you are this, you can use the semi-infinite boundary condition to do the uh, analysis. The other boundary condition that we talked about is at z equals to 0, we said we have k a 2 3 into rho a 2 z equals to 0 minus rho a 2 infinity, which is rho a 2 infinity is the background concentration. This is the background concentration, what is coming out. So this is what is called as the background. equals minus of d a 3 into d rho a 2 by d z at z equals to 0. 
where this is the steady state boundary condition at the uh, surface. So, it says this material is coming to the interface by diffusion and it is getting carried away in this region where the uh, K23, the mass transfer convective mass transfer coefficient is in this region, this is all diffusion here. Okay. So, we are we are looking at this one small layer across the interface, one on that side, one on little bit on that side, little bit on this side. So, um, we are saying that right across the interface, what is bringing material into the interface is being carried away by the interface at the interface from the other side. So, if the diffusion is very slow, however fast the mass transfer is, nothing can it will only carry it at the rate at which diffusion is bringing it in. Okay. So, consequently, the this value will change because k is not changing, k is a function of the uh, convection that side, k will not change. If diffusion is slow, this this uh, diffusion constant is very slow and as a result of which uh, there is a concentration, so let us say there is a concentration at some point, so z equals z1. From here to here to bring it to this point, if it takes a lot of time, as a consequence of that, this concentration will be very small. So, therefore, this flux will also drop down as a result of that. So, the the overall transfer, the rate at which uh, across the interface is controlled by one of these two things, whichever is the slower rate, that is usually the, the rule, uh, it, it, will have to, it has to happen that way. Yeah. This is also our, uh, this, this boundary condition also uh, is our interface mass transfer that uh, at the interface we said the overall mass transfer coefficient and all that. So, we have two resistances here this represents the resistance uh, on the uh, pediment side and this represents the resistance on the uh, on the uh, water side the convection so you, there is a uh, typically we will see that the convection is much faster than the diffusion we expect that so therefore most of the cases ir ir irrespective of what the system is is diffusion controlled it is controlled by this thing the so, rate at which material is going out is is controlled by the rate at which diffusion is happening in the system. Okay. So, we had given a long big solution for this uh, in the last class. I had given you a solution where uh, I will write it down again. rho a to 0, error function of uh, r a 3 to into z divided by into t plus exponential of d a 3 plus multiplied by complementary error function And the flux is uh, again given by it's a function of time. At flux at z equals zero, we are interested in the surface flux. Okay, at z equals zero, you can either write it as uh, k two three into uh, rho a two at z equals zero minus rho a two infinity or minus d a three two into d. Uh, by dz at z equals to 0. So, either of this. So, but you need to solve this, you need to solve this uh, equation in order to get the flux. Okay. 
So the flux is uh, given as k to 3 into rho a to 0 into exponential of uh, k to 3 square time divided by d a 3 to r a 3 to into error function complementary error function of We also discussed that the in this, so we are interested in getting the flux. So this is a steady unsteady state flux. This is not a constant. If you look at this expression at time t equals to zero, this term, this entire term, this will become. So this in this equation before we go into this, in this equation, this this is called as the error function. The definition of error function so error function of an argument uh, x equals 2 by root pi into 0 to x. And uh, it's one minus error function of x. These are there. These functions uh, appear. Uh, you can use a software such as Excel to solve this. You can. It is the software. Excel's have uh, a toolbox. You can use that. You have to click and add in. So I will show you how to do it. But if you observe that uh, this argument for this exponential and the error function, complementary error function terms contains the diffusion coefficient r, k, everything. All of these things are there. So the magnitude of this, uh, these these are functions of this. The uh, at time t equals zero, both of these terms go to one. Time t equals to zero, Na two t will become these two terms, the exponential terms and the error function terms, both go to one. Okay. This becomes k to three rho a to zero. And if you notice, uh, um, the error function, I am not sure, wait one second, we'll go to one. Now, error function goes to 0, but error function of this time t, error function of this goes to 0, uh, sorry, uh, this goes to 0, this is 1. Error function is, z is 0, 1 minus error function is 1. Okay. Yeah, error function of this uh, 0 is 0, not 1, but exponential of uh, time t 0 will become 1. So as time increases, what we expect to see is the uh, the behavior, the flux of Na2 at function of time, it decreases, okay. it decreases with time. So which means this value, what is this value? This value is k to 3 rho a to 0. Does it make sense? So you have seen in other cases where we have already done uh, from transfer from an oil spill into water or into air where we calculated the flux as uh, this much. Okay. 
So, does this make sense? So, in other words, it is this, this minus rho a 2 infinity, this is the flux at time t equal to 0. So, in the general case, what we will do in the general case is that here we will put rho a 2 minus rho a 2 infinity, this is what will happen here. Okay. So, this highest flux is this value, does it make sense physically and it is decreasing after that. What does this mean? This means that at time t equal to 0, there is already chemical available at the surface. So, it does not need to diffuse from below to come to the surface. The only uh, way it gets out is the mass transfer coefficient multiplied by the water side mass transfer coefficient. There is already chemical sitting here at the surface at a concentration of rho a to 0. So, if, if it needs to get out, all it needs to do is uh, cross this resistance, which is uh, the k t the film resistance at the surface. Okay. But as time progresses, this is now smaller, this is not rho a to 0 and material now has to diffuse from below, there is a driving force that is set in. For material to come to the surface, it takes time and therefore then it is not just enough that uh, rho a k a 2, this rho a 2 starts dropping at z equals to 0 very rapidly and therefore the flux starts dropping. To understand this better, we use a different boundary condition to at the surface. So, because of this, so we have diffusion here and convection here. So, let us say that very small amount of material is being brought to the surface and the convection is very fast. Okay. So, whatever is appearing here, it gets carried away very quickly. Okay. If that happens, one of the uh, things that you can do is at the surface instead of at z equal to 0, we use this boundary condition which is k a 2 3 into uh, rho a 2 z equal to 0 minus rho a 2 infinity. Instead of this, what we are saying is at z equal to 0, we are saying that rho a 2 at z equal to 0 is 0 there is nothing there. The moment it comes, it is gone. It is taken away by the convection. However slowly it is coming, it is taken away immediately. So, what we are arguing is that this convection is a much larger than diffusion and therefore, uh, you know, this term dominates con uh, in comparison to this, which means that it is it is not a it is a mathematical argument, okay. it is not it's physically having a 0 concentration does not we have already discussed that there is nothing like 0, this you will never get there, but mathematically it makes uh, reasonable sense in terms of relative rates of uh, how it is. So, this boundary condition is used a lot in different systems, it makes mathematics much simpler. What this will do is then uh, if you do this, the other, other things remain the same, self semi infinite boundary condition still applies we are still having the other, only the z equal to 0 boundary condition is different. Other two bound, uh, the initial condition and the other semi infinite boundary conditions are the same, which means it is z equals to infinity, we are still saying rho a 2 equals rho a 2 0 and time t equals 0, we are saying rho a 2 equals rho a 2 0, these two are same. So, this for semi infinite systems, the initial condition and the one boundary far boundary conditions are the same. So you can use a similarity transform to solve this equation, we will not get into it here. Uh, solutions are available in almost all uh, uh, textbooks which deal with uh, diffusion, uh, which deal with differential equations, you can, you can go and check it out. If you are interested in it, I can give you the solution separately. So, if you do these, instead of the, instead of this boundary condition, if you use this boundary condition, it becomes much simpler. So, using Laplace transform and solve this, what you will get is rho a 2 at z equals to t equals rho a 2 0 into error function of z minus into t that is all. So, this big huge expression becomes very small and then the uh, N a 2 time becomes rho a 2 0 into d a effective d a 3 2 sorry 
into R A 3 2 divided by pi into time. What we are arguing here is this is flux, this is flux, flux equals rho a to 0 minus rho a to infinity divided by pi t by we rewrite this expression in the form of this. So, what this what this means is it is um, rho a to 0 minus rho a to infinity divided by some resistance this is some resistance you see that this resistance is now the only resistance that is there as virtue of this boundary condition what we are saying is this only resistance this is this resistance equals resistance in the sediment only there is no resistance of mass transfer in the water side so only sediment side resistance exists here okay so predominantly what we are saying is by this model if you apply this model to this uh, this equation what we are saying is this decrease is only because of the sediment side resistance increase the, the resistance on the water side is, inf is 0 or constant very small and very small compared to what we are essentially saying is that uh, the resistance overall resistance equals resistance on the water side plus resistance on the sediment side and we are saying that resistance on the sediment side is much greater than resistance on the water and therefore this we are equating it to R sediment that the term the resistance term is this and if you notice that this resistance increases as a square root function of time. So, this this curvature of time of flux versus time is approximately uh, 1 over square root of time okay. So, the flux is approximately decreasing in that order. So, here it is a bit counterintuitive if you look at it I understand uh, see this resistance there is a d a 3 2 term here yeah this d a 3 2 term is understandable. So, this uh, as uh, diffusion uh, coefficient increases resistance decreases that is that is understandable, but this r term is appearing here this r term r is high overall diffusion decreases right, but the diffusion is high overall uh, transport increases. So, this R term seems counterintuitive here, okay. But the R also appears in the numerator in the rho a to 0, you, you have to remember that. So, we the last class we had discussed that the uh, rho a to 0 is w a 3 t multiplied by rho 3 2 divided by R a 3 2. right which means uh, in the flux term if you in the flux term if you put this it is uh, w a 3 t rho a 3 2 divided by r a 3 2 into r a 3 2 comes here. So, overall it becomes w a 3 this is not rho 3 2 divided by so now it makes sense this, this is more more intuitive so as the retardation factor increases resistance increases diffusion increases resistance decreases and everything goes away with time so my suggestion is not to memorize this formula you keep the other one in this is the the equation that we are we, are, we will uh, convenient for us to use is this okay this is uh, d a 3 2 r a 3 2 divided by pi t the d a 3 2 is calculated by d a 2 into epsilon uh, 2 raised to 4 by 3 r a 3 2 is calculated by on 2 plus star okay 
Now if you take this equation, this solution that we have and put it back into the other first one yeah, for conceptual understanding. If, if I am saying the resistance total, overall resistance, uh, the overall resistance equals resistance on the water side plus resistance on the sediment side. If we are assuming in the previous case that the water side resistance is negligible, what if we do not want to do that? Then it becomes the resistance on the water side now is simply K23, yeah, plus uh, this becomes the overall resistance now. This is to conceptually understand this. So, this is the resistance on the water side, this is resistance on the sediment side. And so this is constant, this is not changing, this is changing with time because of diffusion, it is an unsteady state process. This is one way of writing this also. So if you do not want to use that error function equation and all that, you can simply use this. But the problem with this is now, uh, when we want to use this, we are we are not taking z equal to at rho equal to 0 and all that, we are that does not come in anywhere. You can simply write uh, Na2 time at z equals to 0 simply rho a to 0 multiplied by uh, some k overall mass transfer coefficient overall okay In which where this mass transfer coefficient overall is 1 over 1 by k a to 3 plus y t by d a 3 to r a 3 to this is an approximation. This is uh, instead of using the error function and exponential solutions, you can also use this. But the but the assumption here is we are using sediment here. This is a sediment and this is water. There is a region where the concentration is changing. Yeah. So if you if you take the gradient, there is a gradient like this, and it's the concentration is changing in this region. In this region, is uh, concentration is rho a to zero. Okay. What we are saying is, from here to a region here, we are taking a mass transfer jump from here to here via through the sediment and through the water film. We are doing a two resistance theory, like what we do from this. What we are saying is, it's going from directly from here to here via two resistances and we are simply using the driving force divided by the sum of the resistances, that is all. Okay. So this is, a, this is an approximate model. If you have the opportunity, you should use the full model, that is it. No. But if you do not have access to this, you can solve using a calculator. That one needs error function uh, toolbox to do. So if you do not have that, if you want to estimate very quickly. You can simply do this calculation and say flux is going to be this much because it changes with time very slowly. Okay, the time scales because diffusion is a very slow process. You can get quick. Uh, so questions you can answer in this kind of problem is what is going to be the highest flux? What is the highest flux from a contaminated sediment? Is the initial flux? Highest flux is initial flux. It, all you need is the value of rho a to zero and the mass transfer coefficient on the water side. Then as, as you go there after 10 uh, days or what, what is the flux after 10 days, you can use uh, this equation and calculate what will be the resistance after 10 days. Okay. This, so what I suggest is uh, you try to plot this, it will give you a problem in the sense when as a function of time you can see, we will try to see uh, we will try to see this kind of behavior. Given the problem, we will try to see how the flux changes with time. Okay. There is a lot of experimental data for that. The flux will change with time, okay. mainly because depletion is occurring at the surface. Okay. So now, we will look at a few additional cases. So, so what we have now discussed is transport of chemicals from sediment to water. by diffusion okay. 
So, diffusion and surface mass transfer, okay. This is the main thing. There are other mechanisms by which chemical can get into water. So, when we do risk assessment, if you see that contaminated sediment is there, you, how do you know that? Because you have gone and you know there is water concent concentration in the water. So, you go and check the sediment, you go and take a core and you see that contamination exists in the sediment to a certain depth and then you try to estimate what is going to happen if I leave this here for the next 10 years and will that cause damage, okay. So, there is one possibility that you can say that diffusion does not, the amount of flux that is coming from diffusion is very small and if you put this into a box model, it is getting diluted by this water, right? there is a lot of water flow coming. If you apply the box model, this will get diluted or downstream concentration is going to be very small, okay. Now, the uh, argument will be that uh, leave it alone, do not don't worry about it, it is not dangerous, let it stay, right. Now, we know that it depends on the adsorption coefficient and all that. So, if the adsorption coefficient is very high, amount of material that is coming releasing will be very small. So, people do not do it usually and the reasons are the other mechanisms by which chemical can get into the uh, water. How can they, what is the other way in which chemical can get into water? which is actually the most visible way, the diffusion nobody is able to see, so it is a slow process, nothing is happening, it is very, very, uh, um, yeah. It is a very visible process, when, when, when is it a visible process, when you say that like air pollution, air pollution there may be, in this room there may be a lot of vapor phase components which we are not aware of, but we cannot see it. But when will you say that this room is polluted? When you can see it, what can you see? What is it that you can see in air or water? Color, color or? Yeah, you have then invoke water quality parameters, color or turbidity. So, turbidity is a big thing. So, when can turbidity come? What we mean by turbidity here is we call this uh, mechanism called resuspension. Resuspension is when this surface sediment gets taken away, it gets uh, because of the turbulent action of the water, there is enough energy for it to dislodge this mud from the water and it now becomes a cloud here, there is suspended solids. So, T total suspended solids of the water increases and it goes downstream and downstream it can deposit again. So, this layer will go up and it will fall down again. So, the resuspension and deposition both occur all the time. When does resuspension occur? When the, the normal river flow, there is some flow and sediment is static. Resuspension will occur when you increase turbulence. When does turbulence increase? When the velocity of the water is increasing. When does velocity of water increase? When flow is increasing. Flow increases during the time of very heavy rainfall or flooding, a lot of uh, sediment gets carried. This is what we call a silting. So, sediment gets carried and it floods, it goes over the uh, embankment, it drops it and it loses energy and it drops all the silting. This is what we call a silting, a flood plain. A flood plain where all the sediment from the uh, river is getting carried into the flood plain and it deposits there. This is also the reason why we have delta formation and all that. So, when we, when the sediment loses its, uh, the water loses its ability to carry uh, material, it will drop it will sediment. So, this is a problem, resuspension is a problem because when resuspension happens, what is now uh, happening from a way of contaminant transport, what happens? You have a large chunk, say we have W, WA3 is your total sediment concentration. Now, all of this gets into water, okay. So, you get a uh, row TSS, the so total suspended concentration is row 3, 2 in the water. This is not in sediment anymore, it is water. Suppose you get 2000 uh, milligrams per liter of suspended solids concentrations, yeah. Imagine uh, 2000 milligrams per liter of suspended solids. How much of this into WA3, let us say it contains 100 milligrams per gram of A. This is all gone into water now. The water now has an effective say, chemical concentration of this much, okay. 
Yeah. But still it has to dissolve from the surface. It will dissolve. So, in the process of this, then now it has to dissolve. Yeah. But it, the, the water now as, as it is has a has a effective concentration, total concentration is high. Yeah. Now it will dissolve, it has to dissolve then it becomes aqueous concentration. As, as a water quality parameter now it is hazardous enough. So, particles can also go into fish and once it gets into fish it can sit there for a long time. So, this is a very complicated process, this is not as straightforward. So, when material gets resuspended you also have to realize that the adsorption of organic chemical on the solid is in the organic carbon. The size of the organic carbon is, is colloidal, the submicron. Submicron particles do not settle down fast. So, the contamination remains in the water for a long period of time. Even if suspended solid concentration goes down, these colloids are remaining here. So, let us say if I have a large particles, I have, I have a distribution of particles, okay. What I mean, mean is this, let us say there is a distribution of particles, this is dp versus percentage, this is particle size distribution in the sediment. The entire thing goes up into water, so this is the particle size distribution in the water, suspended water. Right? What I am arguing is the W A3 as a function of particle size distribution is not, is not going to be like this or it is not going to be, uh, it is not going to be uh, uniform. Let us say particle size distribution is the same across all particle sizes, which is not true. The particle size distribution is most likely going to be the particle size distribution, uh, the uh, WA3 is most likely going to be uh, like this. What we mean is that the bulk of the contamination, the adsorption is happening on the lower particle size because the lower particle size is the organic carbon. All the larger particles are sand, silt and clay and all that which do not adsorb organic chemicals. The lower ones are the ones adsorbing organic chemicals, but they are all the lower size. When you resuspend, the lower size does not come back quickly, yeah. So, after this is at, this is resuspended. Yeah. Then after deposition, when deposition happens, what remains is this. Deposition happens, this remains. This size does not deposit very fast. It takes a long time. The water, especially in rivers, it does not settle down at all. It will, it will take a long time for it to settle down. It will keep going. The water, so you can see that if you take a beaker full of mud, you stir it up, it will become very cloudy. You wait for then you stop stirring, it will all settle down but the water will not go back to its clean color, it will be slightly yellow and the yellow color is because of these colloids which are there. And if you can imagine that this lot of contamination sitting in the colloid, the, the assumption is this colloids are not attached to the large particles, that is not, that is again a problem. So, some part of the colloids are attached to large particles and it will go up and come down with them, but uh, some of them will break free. So, in the beginning of the uh, discussion about colloids, organic carbon, we had discussed that organic carbon is a uh, amphoteric thing. It is one side is polar, one side is non-polar. It sticks to the uh, silica and other things on one side, but it is also a function of pH. The pH changes, it will disengage sometimes. So, it, it, uh, when the pH is going towards the uh, alkaline, it disengages and comes, breaks free and when it breaks free, a lot of this will remain suspended in the water. It will not remain attached to the solid particle. This is a possibility, okay. This is a possibility, this impairs water quality quite a bit. So, people are scared of this. You, you cannot predict when you will have such an event. It is a catastrophic event. In the sense, it comes and it will destroy the entire ecosystem there and go. It may also do one more thing and in last class I had mentioned that your sediment profiles may look like this. The sediment profiles may look like this. There will be nothing in the top layer and then you will have sediment. Uh, uh, you will have layers, uh, you will have contamination which looks like this. Nothing in the top layer and then you will have subsequent layers, you may have uh, contamination that looks like this. That is because this top layer may be clean sediment that is brought from upstream, down upstream and deposited here, which means that this region must have gone somewhere else. Yeah? This would have gone and deposited somewhere else. This is a mechanism of spreading contamination 
where the contamination was now con secluded in uh, say 100 meter square of uh, sediment. Now, it has gone and spread over several kilometers. This is a problem and then so, resuspension is a very big mechanism okay, of uh, it's a very complicated process. It is uh, it's a function of particle size and all that, but there are simple uh, equations to do. So, this is something that uh, we did in our lab. So, this, this research because it shows that uh, normally the calculation people do is they assume that the concentration is the same. The sediment concentration WA3 is not a function of particle size and it is they simply make the calculation based on WA3 and uh, the suspended solid concentration. When you do that, you underestimate the concentration of uh, chemical in the water because what you are saying is correct. Which in the sense, if it stays longer in the water, it gets a greater chance to dissolve. The particle is uh, now in contact with water, it can dissolve. When it dissolves, what, what can happen next once it dissolves? Once it dissolves, this is solid, it dissolves into water, it can evaporate. It cannot evaporate until it dissolves, it gets into water. Okay. So, a lot of times you see that uh, the, if there is a churning of water in a lake, you can smell some of these things more. You can smell chemicals that have come from the sediment into water from water, they are evaporating now, and you can smell and a lot of times it's contaminated sediments which have a lot of uh, organic waste. On certain days when the water is turbid, you can smell it. Uh, and so, this is also causes an air pollution. Uh, risk on this point. So, we will stop here.